Hello, hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we will be talking about orientation. Orientation is the core of our method. What is orientation in our method? It is the relative, you see this yellow marked part. This text comes from the Oxford Dictionary and orientation can have different meanings. For example, the action of orienting someone or something relative to the points of a compass or other specified positions. That is what our method is about. The relative position or direction of something. And that something is, in our case, a structure, a monument, an ancient monument. And when we examine the orientations of ancient monuments in large quantities, we have discovered some amazing things. For example, in this yellow marked part, it says using the orientation of a building to capture energy from the sun. That is of course true, but it's also very limited. The orientation, the exact cardinal orientation of a building can also be used to research time, because time and movements of the sun is sort of the same. When time goes by, the sun moves, and if you have a proper cardinally oriented building, you can measure time with this. One of the best examples of measuring time by using the sun is Yantar Mantar in Jaipur in India. And this park contains uh, a lot of different instruments, monuments, buildings to measure time. And it's very interesting. But it's also interesting is to notice that this park is cardinally oriented. And of course it is cardinally oriented because the builders are very aware of the movements of the sun and the positioning of their buildings and the positioning of their whole park. And therefore it is cardinally oriented. And it is also interesting to notice that the rest of the city surrounding Yanta Manta is non-cardinally oriented. It is oriented in an arbitrary way to a magnetic pole or to a geographical surrounding. Enough said about this. We go to a very interesting research done by Jeff Boeing. Uh, I recommend to check out his website. Jeff Boeing has done a lot of research to orientation of major cities around the world. Here you see from Bangkok down to Warsaw. It goes in alphabetical order. And you see, for example, Beijing is currently oriented. And I will explain later why Beijing is currently oriented, around what it is currently oriented. And that is very interesting to notice. We are the first to understand why a city is oriented around ancient buildings in the same orientation. Cities, even contemporary cities, are oriented around ancient cores, ancient foundations, ancient structures and so on. We haven't examined all the cities and why they are oriented in the way they are because it's just too much work. But for example, Mexico City is clockwise oriented and it is clockwise oriented around ancient structures. Ancient structures had a lot of influence on the orientation of Mexico City. For example, cities like Berlin and London and Moscow and Rome, Rio de Janeiro, Seoul are a little bit chaotic oriented. There's not really a strong pattern to discover. But when we go to the new world, to the United States, we suddenly see something totally different happening. In a new world, a rational world, a large country, a lot of space, there is no reason to orient a city, a structure, non cardinally And you see this clearly. And it goes from Atlanta to Buffalo, Chicago, Cleveland, Dallas, Denver, Detroit, Houston, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Miami, Minneapolis. Orlando, Phoenix, Portland, Sacramento, San Francisco, Seattle, Tampa and Washington. They are all, without exception, mainly currently oriented. 
And the question is, why? Why is this the case? And I believe that answer is quite simple. Because if you are new in a very, very large country and there is hardly anything to orient yourself to, that is why the new settlers oriented themselves to the cardinals, to north, south, east and west. In which direction do you go in a large country? Do you go east or do you go west or north or south? And there are just a few examples of non-cardinal alignment. For example, Charlotte. Charlotte is a big, big mess. And some other cities like Philadelphia or St. Louis were oriented by using a compass. Because if you look back in time, at the time Philadelphia was founded, the magnetic North Pole was at approximately that direction. So it's clear that this is the reason why Philadelphia is oriented by using a compass. For example, Manhattan has this typical clockwise orientation because the founders didn't want to spoil space. So it's best to build the grid in the direction of the narrow island. It's a logical choice. So that is why Manhattan is one of the few examples of non-cardinal orientation. This is a very interesting video that I captured while browsing through Google Earth and you see the typical cardinal orientation of the whole grid. Every plot, every little city, every road, boundaries, borders, everything is cardinally oriented. Of course there are a few exceptions. It's very interesting to, to browse through these different areas of the United States. When a country is built from scratch, it is logical, it is cardinally oriented. In our research, a structure, a monument, can only have 45 degrees clockwise orientation freedom and 45 degrees counterclockwise orientation freedom. And you see this here in this short animation. And this is what we used in our research. You can subscribe to our Patreon page to watch the full video. And I want to thank you for watching and for your attention. Bye bye.